Okay, now that we know a little bit more about the cameras that are available to us, we can go ahead and start shooting. So we're going to make sure that we have shot one focused in our sequencer editor. Uh, and in our with our cinematic viewport selected, we're going to go ahead and beside the named camera actor, click this little camera icon, which is our camera lock. Now you'll notice that our viewport changes. So what this has done is it's put us into pilot mode in the camera. And using the standard flyby controls in Unreal, we can aim and move the camera where we need it to go. And you'll notice if you look in my normal viewport here that if I move the camera back and forth or up and down, that it's actually affecting that camera's transformations in the level. So this is a really quick way to um, to aim and move your camera around as opposed to uh, you know using the, the transformation widget. So we're just going to uh, line up an establishing shot here with our character. Let's say <clears throat> something like that. This looks pretty good. Now in order to make sure that your camera starts at this position, in your sequence editor with your camera actor highlighted and focused, you're going to want to hit S. Now S is your key all um, hotkey. And you can notice if we drop down the locations here, it's added a hotkey in uh, your X, Y, and Z transformations, as well as in its rotation and scale. So this, instead of keying uh, everything individually, is a quicker way to go about uh, setting up your keyframes on your timeline. Now let's say over 30 seconds or so, we want our camera to zoom in on our actor. So we'll just uh, go back into pilot mode, do a sort of uh, dramatic zoom up here, make sure our camera is highlighted, and then hit S again. And it creates a second set of keyframes. So if we fly over in our normal uh, viewport, you can see as we scrub back and forth that the camera will get closer or farther away from our actor. You'll also notice that uh, the camera's transformation path is uh, highlighted in yellow here. So this looks pretty good, but we have a problem. Our uh, actor is pretty out of focus here, and if this were a, a highly detailed model, you probably wouldn't be able to see much of his facial features, really. So there's two ways we can fix that. We're going to go back to the beginning of the clip. So if we go down here and hit our to front button, it takes you to the very first frame of the sequence. Under our manual focus distance, what we could do is change this setting until we found something that worked and brought our character into focus. Uh, this can be a little time consuming and you might not get exactly what you want. So the, the quicker way to kind of get you started with this is to come over here in the camera settings. Under the focus settings, you'll see manual focus distance. So you can take this uh, this dropper or this picker and you can pick the mannequin in this scene. And I'll just show you really quickly how this works. Is it'll bring this selected actor into focus as much as possible. So after we, uh, we have picked our actor in the scene, we can come back down into our sequence editor and under the manual focus distance, we can pu push this little plus button here, which adds a keyframe to the timeline. So this will ensure that as our sequence starts, this camera will start in this position with these keyframes with this focus, uh, which is indicated by a keyframe here. So now, as we scrub forward, uh, we can see that it's a little better, but it's still not quite focused once he gets zoomed in. So we can either scrub over to the 30 mark here, or a faster way to do it, which will be more useful if you have a longer cinematic, is to um, hit this little over button here with the diamond. And this will bring you to your next set of keyframes, which for us is at the 30 second mark, or 30 frame mark, sorry. So we're going to go over here to our camera settings again, click the picker under manual focus, pick the mannequin, and you'll see that he comes into focus. And then we'll be sure to come back in here and add a keyframe. So now over those 30 frames, the camera zooms in 
and our uh, mannequin friend stays in focus this entire time. So this is uh, this is pretty neat, but it's not very entertaining. We would like our actor to actually do something while we are we're filming him. So how we go about adding a actor to the frame is uh, we can click this add button here and you can see that a, uh, a variety of different things uh, shows up including this actor drop down menu and it allows you to pick any actor that is currently in your scene. Now a quick way to save time doing this is to select the actor in the level space first, come over to add, and you'll notice that the selected actor appears at the top here. So you're going to want to go ahead and just click that now. So now, in our sequencer editor, let me pull this out for um, a better view here. You can see we have our camera up here with all his keyframes, as well as a new uh, mannequin actor down here. And he has the same transformations that you can key if you would like down here and he also has this animation tab so let's go ahead and plus the animations and this is going to search for every available animation in your current project so for us we only have animations that are available to the mannequin but in a larger project you will probably have a um, more variety of animations for different characters and uh, <coughs> maybe even um, different creatures so uh, you may have to use the search bar, but for us it's pretty easy. So we're just going to go ahead and select a third person idle. And you'll notice the idle comes up uh, for its full cycle here. So now, if we come over to the cinematic, we're going to click to front to make sure our camera's uh, at the very start, and we're going to click play. So you can see him uh, going through his his cycle as the camera zooms up on him. If we wanted to extend this, like let's say we wanted our camera to um, to be focused on this guy for uh, maybe 100 frames or 150 frames, we can just grab this cycle, pan it out like this, and it's going to loop the cycle as many times as you need it to until uh, until you're satisfied. For us though, since we're only using a 30 fr uh, frame zoom, uh, one, one cycle is enough. Uh, there's no need to add um, keyframes to an animation. It's just going to add or play that animation over the timeline as it appears in your sequence editor. So that is how you get actors into a scene and uh, the basic camera controls. Uh, next we're going to go over some of the other features of the camera and show you how to uh, maybe manip manipulate the camera for a better uh, dramatic feel.